Hi friends! Welcome to Katie Draws, my video art blog where I document my process and growth as an artist. Today I'm working on a piece of fan art from a show I really enjoy. It's a French cartoon called The Miraculous Ladybug, or if you're in the US like me, Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. It's a really fun little show about a pair of teenage superheroes and their lives both in and out of the masks. But one of the most interesting aspects of the show, in my opinion, is its love square, which is made up of our protagonist, Marinette, her alter ego, Ladybug, her classmate, Adrian, and his alter ego, Chat Noir. So for this piece, I decided I wanted to draw my favorite side of that love square, which is lovingly referred to as Marichat within the fandom. That's Marinette and Cat Noir. If you haven't seen this show, I cannot recommend it enough. It is adorable and they're about to release season two in the US. From what I understand, it's already airing in other parts of the world, but last I heard, we're supposed to have season two here in spring of this coming year so in just a few months it'll be here um, but i'm doing this piece in watercolor and it is definitely stylized a bit i definitely just drew it how i like to draw characters and it doesn't necessarily look a lot like the source material but i feel like i get the feeling right I feel like you see that a lot in fan arts where someone will take the time and draw it and it'll look almost exactly like the characters from the show it's from, but there's going to be something off about the way they feel. Like they might look perfectly right, but the feeling's just a little off. So I spent a lot of time looking at reference images, both stills from the show and also how other people had done it in fan art, just to see if I could pick out those few little things that really makes that character feel like that character. And I feel like I managed to do okay. But as you can see right now, I'm working on the inking and I'm just doing some simple line art giving it a nice thick border. I really wanted to push my style in this one, keep it cartoony and fun without looking like I was just drawing an episode basically. And so I'm having a lot of fun, had a lot of fun drawing this one. And you can see here I'm drawing the flowers that I used in the background to sort of frame the piece out. Something fun that I did when I was working on the concepts for this piece was I sat down and I looked up the language of flowers to see what all symbolisms they had and everything. Because I have a few flowers just sort of in my toolbox that I'm fairly confident in drawing at this stage that I've practiced a lot. But I know that flowers can hold meaning. So in this case, I looked up what flower most accurately represented friendship. Because while the fandom might say some things about this ship, and I love them, in the show, this is definitely a very friendly ship. And so I really wanted to sort of highlight that and sort of keep this one tame and a little closer to canon. Um, so I believe these flowers are pronounced freesias? Uh, I could be saying that wrong, but they're very pretty and they came in a wide variety of colors. Um, and so I decided that they would be absolutely stunning for what I wanted them to do. And so I drew them in to frame it out. And now you're seeing me work on the background. I know it seems a little out of order to be doing the background before you draw the characters. But at least for me, I find that when I'm working on a really simple piece like this that's going to have a really simple background, when I put that solid background color in first and then work on the characters and the important parts of the image, I don't end up in that trap of having really washed out values and shading. Because oftentimes what'll happen is when you're working on a piece, you start with the most important part of that piece. So like the face or the hair or whatever is the center point of your drawing. 
and you'll work through that until you're feeling really good and then you put the other elements of the picture in and suddenly because of the colors and the values of everything else your main focal point ends up kind of washed out and so when I know I'm going to be doing a simple background, I love putting it in first because then I can work with the values that are already there and I don't have to worry about accidentally washing out my focal point. And so here you can see I'm working on the hair and I've moved on to Cat Noir's jumpsuit and all that. And it's, it's all living in about the same value range, but nothing's looking super washed out. And of course I'm going to add more details later but I'm just sort of blocking in the colors right now, trying to get everything where I know it's going to be. I use a hair dryer to speed up my watercolor process because if, <laughs> if I wanted to let this dry naturally, this probably would have been a several hour piece. And it ended up getting done in under, I wanna say an hour and a half, maybe two hours because there were a few elements I let dry on their own. But I find that working with a hairdryer while doing watercolor really speeds the whole thing up and I'm not sitting there ready to paint and not able to and I don't end up making as many silly mistakes. You know, my paint doesn't smear and bleed as much and if I'm working on two sections that are really, really close to each other, I can make sure that one is actually good before I move on to the other one without getting impatient. And I find that that helps me a lot. So at this stage, I want to talk a little bit about these really awesome watercolors I'm using. So I got this palette really, really recently off Amazon. It's the Kuratake Genzai Tambi watercolor um, palette. And they are absolutely amazing. So they're Japanese watercolors, which is important. They're very, very different from what you would expect from a Western watercolor palette like Windsor and Newton and other things like that. So with Western watercolors, they have a very specific binder and you'll have to forgive me. I don't remember exactly which binding agents they use in each of them. I have looked that up at before, but I don't remember now. Um, but with Western watercolors, you get a lot of paper staining. So the pigments go down into the paper and then just live in it. You really can't pick up every pigment after you've laid it down. With this, however, it's because of the binding agent they use, the pigments don't stain the paper, especially as bad, but they also move around and can be reactivated. So you end up having to work with the paints a little bit differently than you would if you're used to working with Western watercolor. And I'm finding that it's very, very nice and I can get some really good effects with the way I use watercolor. Um, and they blend beautifully both on the page and in a palette off to the side, which you might have seen I did for the skin tones. I mixed a few paints together to get those soft, neutral skin tones. <clears throat> But I've zoomed in now and you can really sort of see the details and everything coming together. I'm adding some final touches to the face and to the flowers and just bringing everything to life. And I honestly am so happy with this piece. I messed up in a few places. I'm not happy with those hands. But on the whole, I think this was a really good, fun little piece. Lily, get off the desk, silly. Um, <laughs> sorry, my cat wanted to come up and say hi. So, yeah, here you can see the piece a little bit closer. Um, I had a hard time doing Cat Noir's eyes as well as the hands because when he's got the mask on, the whole eye is green. He still has an iris and a pupil, but the whole thing is green and it's really pretty the way they do it in the show but it ended up being a bit of a challenge for me because I didn't know quite what greens to layer and where to layer them to get the effect that I wanted but in the end after a lot of work I feel like I came out with a fairly okay effect. Ooh, here you can see I'm using my Stablio fineliner pens to just add the tiny hint of color to the stems of those flowers, drying everything down again. 
I really like using my colored pens to add really tiny fine details because I feel like I have a lot more control than if I just wanted to try and paint it. And I didn't really leave a lot of space between my outlining and the stems anyway, so paint would have just made way more mess than it was worth, really. And then here I am using my Jelly Roll white gel pen to bring out some highlights in the image. This is honestly my favorite step. It doesn't matter how good or bad the drawing is before you get to this point. After you add those highlights in the white pen, everything just pops and there's a nice little shine and you don't have to worry about masking things off to get that nice white in there. I do find with these paints specifically, sometimes it'll pick up a little bit of the pigment and you won't exactly get white, you'll get a whatever color paint colored white. And you know, you've got to work with it, clean the pen tip off a lot. But anyway, I do the best I can and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just doing a little bit more detailing here, it's almost done. and. That's about it. So, this is my finished piece. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested in owning any of my art, I have a link to my shop in the description below, along with the full list of tools and materials I use in this video. And a big shout out to all my lovely Patreon supporters. If you like what I'm doing and would like to help me out, please check out my Patreon at the link below. And I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye.